Good morning, welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I'm Kyla Watson here with Phil Long. How are you doing, Phil? I'm doing just fine, thanks for asking. It's another beautiful day, maybe not as sunny right now, but uh, you know, it's, it's still mild temperatures and we're thankful for what we've had, so. Yes, it's a mild winter day, so that we can be thankful for. <laughs> We would be disappointed if this day was, you know, the beginning of fall or a June day, but for yeah. summer we can take it. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say we'll be we'll be thankful if it's like this in January and February, but probably not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, today we're going to be talking about weed control and things that we've learned from the 2020 season. Yeah. It, like we talked last week, this is a good time of the year to just follow up on some things and, and kind of remember what happened this season. And this is just one that I just can't get away from because, you know, I do enough driving during the year that uh, this, I, I even had some good pictures on this one. It's one that, you know, uh, I saw a lot of places. We had a lot of challenges with weed control in 2020. Um, and, and it just comes to the forefront of my mind. And, and I know a lot of farmers that called me on it too, as well. So it's something that we need to definitely go back through and talk about. All right. Very good. So what are some of those troublesome areas that you saw in 2020? Sure. You know, I, I think the best way to think about it is why we had so many of these issues and, and it's like anything in agronomy, it's, it's a culmination of things. So uh, the way I, I look at it is, you know, 2019, if we back up even another year, we had a lot of fallow acres uh, throughout our Latham country, our territory. Um, so that obviously was part of the cause, of, especially if you didn't control weeds. That's that's a that's a bad a bad thing. That's why we talked about cover crops so much during that uh, early in 2020, the growing season. <clears throat> we got a lot of things planted early, but it was slow growth. Uh, May was really cool. Uh, compared to June, so slow growth, the uh, plants took off slow, even if they were planted early. We had soybeans on our farm planted in late April, and they didn't canopy till the end of July, the last few days. Uh, that's not ideal for yield, and it's not ideal for weed control. Um, so when it canopies, is a huge deal in 30 inch rows and trying to control weeds and soybeans. Uh, so I would say that's one of the major uh, players this year was was poor canopy. It just didn't, even the, one, the beans that usually canopy well, didn't canopy as early as they do uh, in 30 inch rows. You know, we can't deny that we had some herbicide damage, uh, you know, that we're learning from, uh, continuing to figure that out. And, and thankfully, we can be thankful that we've still got that technology around to learn another year and figure this out so that we have the technologies to use on these troublesome weeds. You know, and the last thing I'd say, not only from 2019, but this year and the weeds, uh, weed issues that I saw, whether it's water hemp or another weed out there, we've really built up uh, some good reserves in our weed seed bank. And I hate to say that, but that's what happens when we see that much, you know, water hemp, a water hemp plant can easily produce over 200,000 seeds. They're very fine, small seeds. Uh, so when you see a, a big plant out there that's four or five foot tall bursting through the canopy, that's what we get. And then you run it through the combine and unfortunately it spreads to not only that field and the rest of that field, but maybe other fields. So we've, we've increased our weed seed banks. We need to be on high alert going forward. So just a big, you know, a big issue that came up this year. And I'm not saying it was any one thing. We had weather conditions that, that weren't conducive to a lot of residual herbicides after they were sprayed too. So a lot of things added up and it just it was like 2020 has been, it was just the worst of all situations in terms of weed control and soybeans. Okay, so before we talk about where we should be going and um, I guess proactive steps to control that, let's talk about where we've been. So what are some of the current practices that we're doing? Sure, so everybody's a little bit different. You know, every farmer does things, uh, you know, a little bit different, but in general, I'd say, you know, we typically have at least, you know, some farmers do a burn down, some do tillage. Uh, and then they put uh, a residual out there. We're getting much better at, at making sure that we have residuals uh, going into the soybean crop, whether it's no-till or not. Most farmers uh, realize the need and the importance of having that residual down there and even layering some of those residuals throughout the year. So, you know, getting that residual down, getting off to a pretty good clean start, whether it's with tillage or a combination of herbicide or something, uh, getting it a clean start. And then the trouble that we usually end up in is, is the post-emergence control. You know, we're struggling with group 14s and 15s. Uh, as some of these herbicides that probably aren't going to last too much longer in terms of resistance to our major weed threats. 
Um, so, you know, those ones that we use in season are probably diminishing, unfortunately. Um, so we typically spray up one post spray and sometimes two. And a lot of times that second one is a rescue treatment of some kind, mm -hmm. which is not good because if you're trying to rescue it, you know that it's a bad situation already. So, you know, usually we have a, a post emergence. Uh, and if, if that's just something like a PPO inhibitor that's more contact and you don't have a residual out there, that's another challenge that we need to overcome. And I, obviously, these all cost money, uh, but we're, we're kind of losing this fight. So I'd say, you know, a lot of farmers are doing a great job, uh, but this year was just a really uh, eye-opening year. And uh, whether it was Liberty, you know, whatever the program was, you know, Extend, Liberty, Enlist, um, all of them uh, had some issues this year. So um, just a, a really, a, to me, a, wake, a time to wake up and, and make sure that we're checking all the boxes and doing everything we can right to Get, make sure we keep these weeds out. Okay, which leads us right into my next question. Regardless of the technology, what are some of the practices that farmers can be implementing looking forward? Sure, so you're gonna, gonna start uh, hearing this a whole lot more, but the, the phrase is, is, is start clean, stay clean and spray clean. And, and you know, this is a, a great way to remember things. Uh, I, I won't say it's anything terribly new uh, but it's a good way of, of thinking about it. So making sure that we do do use the burn down and get a residual out there early on to control it for that first month or so. Obviously, weather plays a role in that, just like this year. Um, you know, but staying clean, not waiting till weeds grow up. But that's part of the the spray clean part. Making sure that you're spraying even post emergence before you see weeds out there. Getting that residual down, and even having the contact herbicide in there to take care of any weeds that might be out there, even if you're not seeing them. You know, that's not a new concept. You know, the idea is, is making sure that we're spraying weeds under four inches. Uh, this, is, this is a little bit of a passion of mine because I have a, a history with um, weeds and so forth. Probably would be my second uh, career choice if, if I could. But, uh, you know, I enjoy understanding the biology and life cycles and so forth of them. But I remember when uh, Extendamax, Extend Beans first came out, and, uh, you know, four or five, six years ago when they're being planted, not on a commercial scale yet, but ramped up. And I heard a farmer comment and show me a weed, uh, a water hemp weed in Iowa that was two foot tall that he took out with with uh, Extendamax. And I thought, ah, we're already missing the point. That's not the idea. You know, this is not the time to try and see how much it can handle uh, because weeds, I can guarantee you, will always outsmart us. I talked about how many weeds they can or seeds they each one can produce, especially water hemp. Some of our cha most challenging ones are the best at reproducing. So we got to remember that they're always going to find a way to outsmart us. And you know we've seen a lot more uh, uh, metabolic resistance as well, and that just simply means that the plants are getting better at metabolizing through that herbicide. Just like we kind of see uh, our soybeans this year metabolize through some of the, the group four. Uh, whatever it was, group four uh, issues, you know, curbside that they were taking in, weeds do the same thing. Uh, and, and that will continue to be a thing. So you can't rely on any one herbicide in any, any too much, you know, not spraying it too many times in one season, things like that. But there's just a lot of ways that weeds have to get around it. So, um, you know, the other thing I'd say is that this is not new either, but I, I just grabbed a, a label. This is an old Extendamax label, but um, not forgetting that site of action group. And up here, it's, it's right here, the black uh, number there, the number four, uh, it's a growth regulator. So it's, it's that number four. If it was glyphosate, it'd be, or Roundup, it'd be at number nine, uh, and Flexstar, 14, things like that. But writing those down and making sure that you're taking a, a tally of what site of actions you're using in those fields is going to be extremely important because the more that you use each one of those groups, those sites of actions, the, the much faster you're gonna you're gonna see resistance gain or add up if you're using multiples of those. And if you've never done that before, and you're using um, you know products even like Authority and things like that that have multiple herbicides in them mixed, um, you'll notice really quickly that we're using a limited number of sites of action against our broadleaf weeds. So. That's really important, uh, making sure that you understand which resistant weeds you're fighting out there is also important. It's more than just water hemp. You know, around here, there's a pretty good list. And in each territory, I know I talk to farmers 
uh, that, that know them pretty well, but make sure you know which ones already have resistance to those sites of action that you're trying to use against them. Because if you're using those and they're already not effective, um, you, know, you need to rethink that or add in other uh, sites of action as well. You know, the last thing that I would say uh, is kind of my, uh, to me, it's a battle cry, you know, rally the troops, whatever it takes to, to take care of those weeds, because uh, controlling broadleaf weeds and soybeans is a huge challenge in and of itself, just because they're broadleaf crop and broadleaf weeds. Um, but doing whatever it takes, you know, I talked about how many seeds the, each, each weed can produce and then running a combine through it, you know. I know five, six, seven years ago, uh, actually before I was at Latham's, when I was an extension, I worked with farmers that, that still did roguing crews and stuff when they'd see, uh, you know, water hemp and Palmer plants in, in Indiana that, that were out there. They didn't want to see them get out of control because they knew from uh, farmers down south and seeing those, those, those piles of weeds being burned at the edges of the fields the challenges that were ahead if they let them get get past them. So, you know, using what we have at our disposal, even if it's not chemical control, you know, rotation, I, 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 I always encourage rotation, you know, for all kinds of pest pressures. But when it comes to weeds, sometimes you do have to do things like maybe a couple years of corn on corn uh, to get certain weeds under control and reduce that that pressure that you're seeing out there. And even if you have the option, uh, row spacing. Obviously this year was, uh, like I mentioned before, it was a challenge because of growing conditions and so forth. But if you have the option to plant some acres uh, in narrower rows, 15s or 20s or whatever that, that may be, you know, try that, make sure you're using the right variety and make sure it's resistant if you have issues with white mold or things like that, that uh, don't benefit from a dense canopy. But um, just, just make sure that you're using every uh, everything in your arsenal uh, to help you out uh, when it comes to battling these tough weeds. Okay, very good. And I love how you said that 2020 was a challenging year and a little bit of wake up call, but we all know that out of challenges come opportunities. So an opportunity to uh, better your program as well. Exactly. Yeah, we can always look forward to next year. You know, um, obviously I, I threw that label up there for a reason and, and I, I talk with a lot of growers and you know, reading the label is not a bad thing. You know, we're all taught how to do that, especially if you take private pest pesticide applicator trainings. Um, so paying attention to that, using labeled rates, this is not the time uh, to short uh, rates to reduce costs and, and paying attention to antagonism in the tank and things like that is so important as we keep mixing more and more things. I get calls from farmers all the time. Can I mix this, this, and this? Well, remember, you know, especially as we move forward, we have those, those group fours and that, those are growth regulators. They affect the plant they make it essentially outgrow itself. So if you're mixing that with things that require translocation, uh, moving in the plant, uh, that's kind of an opposite. So just paying attention to those things on the label and doing some of that reading for yourself so that you know uh, you're making sure you're getting good control. So yeah, it's a great time to remember these things and, and obviously 2021 will be better, I promise, hopefully. But <laughs> you know, we gotta, we gotta learn from 2020 and, and take as much as we can from it. Okay, very good. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add this morning? Nope. Uh, I was just trying to get in. Uh, next next week, I'll try and pick a more exciting or positive topic, I'd say. But I really enjoy weeds, and, um, you know, I don't enjoy seeing them uh, mixed with soybeans. So it's it's not an interseeded crop. It's, you know, you don't want to see those weeds out there. So uh, it's it's a passionate topic of mine, but uh, it's, it's one that we, we can all learn more on. Okay, very good. Well, thank you for your knowledge and time this morning, Phil. You're welcome. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Have a good day.